I am going to teach you the best way to memorize the unit circle, specifically the first quadrant of the unit circle. And I say that because usually, especially if you're in a calculus class, you only care about the first quadrant, <laughs> unless you're taking a trig class. But, um, And if you do need some other quadrant in the unit circle, if you know the first quadrant, you can usually figure it out. Now, what you have to remember is this first quadrant splits into three different angles here in the middle. And there are five different points that you really have to memorize. So one of the points is on the x-axis, one of the points is on the y-axis, and there's three other kind of spikes coming out. And each of these, well, since they're a point, that means that they are in x comma y. Hopefully you can see that. And these x or y values is usually what you're being asked to find. So let's look at just the x and the y axis. Remember that this is the unit circle, right? The unit circle means that this circle has a radius of one. That means if I go in the x direction all the way through the radius, then the x coordinate is going to be one. Notice that this is where the circle intersects with the x axis. So since this is an x intercept, that means y is zero. Same up here. Notice that this is where the unit circle meets the y axis, which means it has an x coordinate of zero. And since it is a unit circle, unit circle has a radius of one, that will be one. Now, up here and here, if you recall that one time around the circle, 360 degrees, which is also pi over two, if I start here, if I'm starting at this point, I've gone around zero times, and I've also gone around pi over two times. Because if I go around the circle one time and I end up at the same spot, uh, it'll give me the same value. So if I only go fourth of a way around the circle, and a fourth of the way around the circle, if the full circle is two pi, up here is going to be pi over two. Now, I don't have a great way of remembering these. Um, this one is pi over six. This one is pi over four. This one is pi over three. So you'll notice that we're going from zero to pi over six to pi over four to pi over three to pi over two. Certainly all of these are getting bigger. That makes sense. I don't have a great way of remembering the radians, but the real magic comes in with these values. That's what you're concerned about. That's what most people are uh, really having trouble with. So here we go. Everything is a fraction and everything is a fraction over two. So that's where we start. Everything's over two. Here's the real trick. Um, when I'm tutoring people in this, they uh, I, I play a joke with them and I say, can you count to three? And then they say, well, yes, Brian, of course I can count to three. So I say, let's count to three. Uh, one, two, three. And I say, let's do it again. One, two, three. And everything on top is square rooted. The square root of one is one. I won't write that. And you're done. <laughs> so you've just drawn the first quadrant of the unit circle. Um, I'll remind you if you'd like that this is 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. It's usually okay if you don't remember those. Those aren't often asked for in degree. Usually they're asked for like sine of pi over six, sine of pi over four cosine of pi over three. But once again, if you really want to count down, you go zero, one, two, three. If you want to count up, you can go zero, one, two, three. Everything's over two. Everything's square rooted. The square root of one is one. That's my trick. I hope you enjoyed it.